build your own cheap arcade stick. This little acrylic kit with these LED zero delay buttons, it, very inexpensive, easy to build as well. And uh, I love the, the look in the dark and it works great with arcade games. Um, a lot of fun. So in this video, we're going to be building a cheap arcade stick. And no, I've made many videos like this. You can even use a shoe box, but banggood.com sent me a acrylic box. They also sent me a two player uh, arcade stick and button uh, kit. So in this video, we're going to go step by step by step and you can build your own or check out some of the builds that I've done as well. But these are cheap, inexpensive, and they just work for Raspberry Pis and PCs. It's a good, cheap alternative. So for those of you who are unaware, this is one of my more successful builds, my shoebox build. These all came complimentary of Banggood. So the arcade stick is just literally a box with a two panels. And um, you get suction cups. Really interesting why there's hooks. I feel like these were like used for like a shower and they were just like, yeah, we could, you know, we'll send them with. All right, so you hook it in and then you, boom. And now it's locked into place and you can have suction cups. It's actually really sick. Cool little metal slug sticker. It's already cut and everything for you. Another bang good, banging good time. What this kit gets you is two joysticks. The joysticks are eight way or four way. You could just take off the gate over here. And uh, when you take off the gate, you can rotate it. Two encoder boards. And my understanding is these will work great with a Raspberry Pi and a PC, but if you wanna run these on a, and they're really good boards. Like a lot of people out there say for how cheap they are, they work. So it looks like they're sold out of the King of Fighters one, but you have the Pac-Man one and then the Metal Slug one that I received. Look, they even took off the Metal Slug logo. Also note the hardware, I guess you can kind of see, but they kind of like, you know, soften the screw top. You know, you can't really see the screw in there. But uh, yeah, there's the exact same thing I received with the same hardware. If you're interested in buying that, you might also notice it's frequently bought together. That's exactly what I bought is you know, with this kit though, you can build two of these. So you might wanna buy two shells or what I'm gonna be doing is just saving it for another build. But you get the red and the blue, you get you get two each of the smaller ones. Note on the encoder board over here, having these two extra, uh, you know, uh, volt uh, connectors will allow you to run the LED lights. Sometimes you'll get these boards without the five volt connector. And then as you see here, it's, it's marked correctly on all the different actions you need. But note that this website, Banggood, has a ton of kits for you. For example, if you want one without LED lights, I would just go with this kit right here. It's basically the same exact kit, but it's black and red instead of blue and red. And uh, you get, um, you know, you just don't have the five volt and you don't have the LEDs built into the, into the button, so you save a little bit of money. There's a total of four connectors here. The ones closest to you on the bottom of the screen are for the LED, and then the ones connected to the black switch here is for the actual button. Now these do not make the clicking noise as much as a, here are different style that actually have the mechanism on top. They make a much louder noise. A lot of people, if you've seen some of my other builds, it can get a lot more complicated, but these wires clip right in, you know, the four way right here, just clips right into there and you don't have to worry about, oh, where does it go? Um, and then when you go to the encoder board as well, it's very obvious where the, uh, where the actual joystick goes. Um, as far as the button layout here, I'll post something uh, on the screen to let you know which is which, but they even label it on the back here. K12, K11, S start, select, R1, L1, R1. And uh, you can always change that as well if that's not the configuration you're, uh, you're looking for. And then this is where the USB, the USB cable hooks into, and then that's where you hook it up to your device. 
As far as compatible devices with this set, um, it's really PC and RetroPie is just plug and play super easy. My understanding is it may work for PlayStation 3. Again, I've never tested it, but from what I read online, it should. And then if you want to put it on like the Xbox or PlayStation 4, just look around. I know they make adapters for this. You may be able to run it without the adapter, but yes, you can run this and then run an adapter. But then you also got to ask yourself, by the time you buy the adapter, isn't it just cheaper to go and buy a stick that's already made? So here's the one I built a long time ago, and you can see the wires go out the back. I have one for power and one for USB. And then I have two white ones on the side. I like having the admin buttons here. Pretty cool, right? Another interesting thing about these wires is they're very thin here, and just note that they're really hard to take off. So make sure you put the connection properly these little clips here these ones that go on the actual buttons on the back of the buttons they're very hard to you know once you put it on they're really hard to pull off which is good and bad it's bad if you mess up all right so because we're going with red let's get rid of our blue buttons it's on this way obviously and put your collar collar goes flat like that round part there that simple and we'll align these later. You can align all the LEDs or align all the, you know, the positive and negative. As the arcade stick, typically you have the, um, this part to the bottom right. So it'd be something like this. Then we can attach our ball. I'm really digging this. And you'll notice these pins are slightly offset, this one on the right being closer to the bottom of the screen. So all of those are gonna do red, and all these I'm gonna do blacks. I don't think it matters actually for that front row, but that back row for the LEDs with the number facing the correct direction, uh, you should have positive on the left and negative on the right. And you'll see that later in the video too. All right, we got one in, and you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna put the next one here. I've made a decision. This is now gonna be a pinball style arcade stick. So if I wanna to switch to pinball, I can rotate it around and go like that if I wanted to, or if I'm okay with it being a little farther reach. Uh, those two buttons in, one, two, the screen that you're looking at, but basically it's buttons one all the way up to 12 on the bottom here. Just gonna go black and then red, black and then red on everything. Really just, you just plug into it. Starting with your USB, and then I can go ahead and grab this out of the way. Throw that towards the back. Six, depending on how you wanna do it, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then do nine, ten. One, two, and then 10. Okay, I could literally just be done right now if you're not gonna light up these LEDs. So you can see on my generic gamepad, let's go to property sale. And then now we can go ahead and test it by you know, moving the, the joystick. We're good there. Pressing the different buttons. And we're good. So make sure you test. You just test all the buttons. Yes, I have six pressed down right now. So that's a good way to just test, make sure your buttons are correct. So in this step, I just took an old wiring harness and I'm gonna go ahead and wire the LEDs to the encoder board, black and positive. Except those two top ones. Oh, now we have all eight. I mean, I guess it's probably easier to just get a screwdriver and start screwing. All right, so here it is, all said and done. 
couple little things I didn't point out earlier that are kind of nice details is there's like a little lip there just for the screws barely to fit. I did not put the rubber grommets on the bottom. I'm not a fan of those myself. Um, I can easily just tape over this, fill it with putty, um, add my own rubber grommets to it in the corners here or just over it. Um, add magnetic strips to make it magnetic if I wanted to, all sorts of things. Um, as you see, I modified those two buttons. I added those on that is not stock. You can see I kind of messed up there a little bit, but you will never see that when you're looking at it. And um, here's the stick. You will have to open it if you want to change it from eight way to four way, so that's kind of a pain, but it's just four, it's just four screws. I really like the way the screws turned out and everything. I mean, this is gorgeous now. Um, the cable's kind of weird. It has this little, like, this piece here, and I could have left that side in the thing, in the actual container, but now my cord is a little shorter. I was really indecisive of what to do with that particular piece. I kind of would prefer a little extra length on the cord here, so it kind of just kind of sits there freely, but um, technically, if yeah, if you pulled on this super, super hard, it might mess up the PC, the actual encoder board, but um, yeah, that's up to you. So that might be something I might do differently is, is hot, put this part into the into the container and just lose a couple inches of, of the length here. There you go. So you got the LED on the left and the right controller here to our Raspberry Pi. We already have some power. Generic dragon wire, we got up, down, left, right. We got, uh, I wanna go start to the right. Oh. There we go. Start, select, A, B, X, Y, L, R. And then we got L and R on the sides. And then uh, left thumb, we're just gonna skip all these. Just hold down the buttons. Hotkey enable, select. Okay, press A. And uh, let's go ahead and play some arcade classics. Oh, whoops, launched, launched the first game I saw. Uh, hit select here, let's go um, Ultimate Mortal Kombat. Let me try that. Okay, let's um, also, I mean, this is a metal slug cabinet, so let's go down to Neo Geo and play some metal slug, select, go down to M. Let's do metal slug original, load that up. Flame shot. So, can you play Super Mario? Let's try. This is where you gotta be careful because it's just hard because you have an eight way. It's hard to play. But absolutely, you can play Mario. Do way ahead of time. That's why this. See how hard that was to do? That's the disadvantage of the controller. Oh, the arcade stick. Get it. 
so there you have it. Um, I didn't play any pinball games. If I was going to play pinball games, I'd just hit, you know, uh, select on my, not select, but hit start on my controller, go down to configure controls, configure input. Yes, I want to configure it. And you can change this to A and B or X and Y or whatever the games use for that particular controller. Or you could do it within the game itself within RetroArc and do it there, depending on what emulator or what system you're running. Um, and then think about this as well on your, you can use this on your PC. So um, as long, it's not uh, X input, but as long as you can get it to, you know, uh, use this particular controller, depending on what emulator or what front end you're using, you can get it to work. But that, you know, does it doesn't work for everything. So just keep that in mind. And uh, there you have it. So thumbs up, really digging this, especially for the price. But um, yeah, if you got the money, go out and spend way more. But if you're looking for a budget thing, I mean, Raspberry Pi people are all about the budget. So I think this is a good add-on for your particular uh, emulation build.